Good evening, viewers. Welcome to Restoration Hour with Prophetess Penny Tetra. It's always a pleasure to have you every evening, and thank you for always tuning in to check what God is saying, because this is all about the Spirit of God uh, declaring and speaking things that needs to happen in our lives. And um, I thank God that you are tuning in you are taking advantage of what God is saying in such as times like this in restoration times. So last week we started a new series, um, I Cannot Come Down. And um, uh, this is uh, series number two. It's, it's, it's part two of I Cannot Come Down. And let's see where the Holy Spirit is taking us. But Going back to what we spoke about last week, it's a story of Nehemiah. We we're on uh, Nehemiah 6, and uh, we saw that uh, when God is about to do something in your life, the enemy is there to make sure you don't uh, achieve what you're supposed to achieve. And when God is speaking deliverance, restoration, healing, and breaking forth, it's very important that we watch and pray. We don't just pray and, and do things blindly, but our eyes need to be opened spiritually and physically. And that is why I had to bring this series so that on all areas we are watching for whatever that can make us delay to what God is doing in this season. Remember last week we even read about the letter, I think we stopped there, where Tobiah and San Palat they sent a letter to Nehemiah they gave him and the, and the letter was, was not even saying anything, you know. It was saying, Geshem said, you know, you, you're building the walls because you want to make yourself a king. And it was a letter that wanted to demean his character, to pull him down so that he can come down from where God has placed him so that he can stop the work that he's doing and go and explain himself. And that is why we on this series, that there are things that are really there to waste our time. When God is busy with us, believe me, we need to focus. We need to hear what he's doing. We need to always be in the presence of God and our spiritual ears to always be open to hear what God is saying and our eyes of the spirit to always be able to see what God is doing in our lives. And today, we're going to go to Nehemiah 4 and see what God is saying there. Nehemiah 4, I'm going to start from verse 3. Now Tobiah, an Ammonite, was beside him, remarked, that stone wall would collapse. If even the fox walks along the top of it, it will really collapse. Verse 4, then I prayed. Hear us, our God, for we are being mocked. May their scoffing fall back on their own heads, and may they themselves become captives in the foreign land. But when San Palat, verse 7, when San Palat and Tobiah and the Arabs, Ammonites, and you remember the Ammonites, we spoke about them to the other series we were talking about, they are the enemies of the children of God. So here we get them again. But when San Palat and Tobiah and the Arabs, Ammonites and Ashdodites heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps, the gaps of the wall of Jerusalem were being repaired, they were furious. Verse 8. They all made plans to come against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night to project ourselves, to protect ourselves. Verse 17, but from then on, only half my men worked while the other half stood guard with spears, shield, bows, and coats or mail. The leaders stationed themselves behind the people of Judah who were building the wall the laborers carried on their work with one hand, 
supporting their load and the one hand holding a weapon. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So from these scriptures that we just read from verse 4, we're seeing that it was intimidation. It was intimidation from the beginning. Now, this Nehemiah was told that he needs to build the, the, the walls of Jerusalem. It was laid in his heart that he needs to do. The, and don't forget, Nehemiah was doing very well. It's just that he was born so that he can be a national hero for such a time as he lived on. So me and you, there are things that God has laid in our lives. There are those things that God that has laid in our hearts, you know, that no matter what can happen, no matter how you can fail, how many times, no matter disappointed you can be, embarrassed or whatever is happening in your life, but there is that dream, there is that thing that says to you, this is who I am, this is what I'm going to become. So when you are a child of destiny, when God, because all of us, there are a lot of things that God has has given us so that his glory may shine in the land of the living, so that there may be peace, prosperity. Remember, the plans for me and you is to prosper. Those are the plans that God has for me and you. And we've got an enemy that wants to make sure that those plans, they don't come to pass. And the enemy comes in a form of San Palat, Tobiah, and Geshem and them. That is why when we in this season and God is saying, I'm restoring what was stolen from you. I'm delivering you. I'm bringing deliverance in your life, in your family that even your parents cried for and they never saw that deliverance. But I chose you so that they can be delivered through you. There's an enemy who's going to say, who do you think you are? They failed generation to generation. Now you're just going to come in 2022 and think you're going to make it and think you're going to break the altars that were there from generation. You know, the covenants that were made by forefathers. Who do you think you are? In that way, we need to open our eyes. We need to be prayerful. We need to be stubborn. We need to refuse to come down like Nehemiah. He said, I cannot come down. Can you type that where you are? I cannot come down. Share this, this life. Somebody might need to hear this message. Don't be jealous to get it yourself. Share it everywhere. Now just share it and just type there. I cannot come down. I refuse to come down. Now when we look at these scriptures, we see that it was intimidation from the beginning. Intimidation started when they heard that they started to build. Everything that happens in our lives... You know, intimidation, uh, attacks, everything, sicknesses and what you call. It starts when the enemy sees that this man, this woman, this child is going somewhere. And there's an opposition that comes. Intimidation was to instill fear. This intimidation when they heard, because the walls were broken, the walls were fallen down. And nobody thought, you know, let us go and build the walls you know, and make God happy because we've got money. Tobias and St. Palazzo, people who are not poor, you know, they could have done it, but they were just born to, to pull people down. They have the PhD, pull him down, pull it down. They can't do anything right, but they're waiting for those that are doing something right. And when they do it, they want to make sure you come from that ladder and come to, to where they are. So this intimidation was to, was to instill fear. It was to say, you, you, you cannot do it. You need us. You know, there's, there's attacks, there's wars. It was to instill fear. If you're improving yourself, it's part of building yourself. So when you're improving yourself, when you start saying, uh, I, want to do, I want to do better. I want to take my business to another level. I want to take... My, 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 whatever I'm doing at work to another level. I want to take my school, my, my children to a better school. I want to change my car. I want a new house. Immediately, there's this intimidation, you know, that comes to instill fear. 
And sometimes it comes through voices. Look at what you're earning. Do you think you can make it? They can never, you know, say you're successful on it. Who has ever had that car in your family? Who do you think you are? Even your, the, the children. We've never had children who went to such schools. It's intimidation that wants to make you to stop doing, you know, what you're supposed to do. To stop making you break forth. To break through. To stop you to get the deliverance that you've been crying for. When you are building your career, your business, your marriage. You know, some people have made up their minds that I want to build my marriage. I want to make it, you know, more better and this and that. And the Tobias, they come. The Sun Palats, they come. Don't you know how marriages are? It never works. It has never worked. You know, you just get married to live. You, it, people are not so faithful. They, 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 they Tobias, they come to tell you what they went through, you know, to pull you down. It doesn't matter. Rather fail on your own, but don't allow the sun ballads to pull you down because you can make it. You can do it. Hallelujah. If you've been disappointed, God can still bless you. Amen. Even losing weight, they instill fear. Just something simple. You know, in 2022, I want to eat well and lose weight. They start, they laugh at you. You who like chips like this, who eats this food, and it starts with small things like that. You need to hear people around you, the, the, the association you're keeping, what they say about the small things that you do that are improving you. Studying, they will start telling you, you couldn't study when you were young, look at you. Do you think you're going to make it? You're so old, you know? Let me tell you, can I talk to people who, who think I'm old for marriage? I'm old to start the business. I'm old to start driving. I'm old to start dreaming. The devil is a liar. There's no age limit. Hallelujah. If you feel your dream, you can start it now at that age. It will happen. Remember, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. Nehemiah refused. Hey, he refused to be distracted. He refused confusion to come to him. And we're living in times that there are people who are so good, you know, to tell you, you're old. You're not a, 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 a wife material. You cannot marry. Are you going to make it? Your children cannot do it. You know, don't start that business. Others have failed. You won't fail. You're going to make it. So do not allow the Tobias and the Sun Ballads to tell you of your age. When you look in the Bible, you know, even the Sarahs and the Hannahs, you know, lots of people in the Bible, God wanted to show off. God left them to get to their certain age so that he can show me and you that age is nothing. Do not allow people to say you cannot marry as a woman at that age. And let me tell you, there are still good men who can come and marry you and make you happy. There are still good women who can get married to you and be good wives at that age. Age has got nothing to do with anything. Hallelujah. Marriage is from the Lord. I don't know. I just feel like talking to people that are being told even by their mind, you know, to say you can't do it. You, you've passed the stage. There's no passing of stage. Amen. So you can never impress People like Tobias, you can never impress people who are pulling you down. You can never impress such people that whatever you try to do, they start to tell you this is right and this is wrong. So verse 4, uh, verse 4, they, 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 they were mocking. They were mocking. So they were criticizing. What is, 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 is criticizing? Let's start with the types of criticism. Somebody can say, but why do you say they were criticizing? There is constructive criticism, but there's also destructive criticism. And Tobiah and San Ballad were very destructive and they had destructive criticism. What is destructive criticism? They dig your past just to nail you. Where you are, you, you, you focus. This is what I'm going to do. Remember, yesterday you forget about it. 
today we're doing what we have to do today so that tomorrow we can be better people. We never look back at the mistakes that you made because the enemy likes that. And the Sun Palats and the Tobias, when they see that you are rising, they do the destructive criticism, which is digging your past just to nail you. Ah, oh, don't you know how was this person? Who is he? Who is she to tell us what to do? They there to, to pull you down, to go back to your past so that you cannot do what God has called you to do. You are called to be elevated in that job. You are called to be a business guru. You know, one of the women to take charge and say we've never seen such a kind of a man, such a kind of a woman who did this in their field, in their business, who came with new things. You, you are born to change things around. Hallelujah. To do things that no eye has seen, no ear has heard. It has not even conceived in our hearts what God wants to do through your life. But this destructive criticism from these Tobias, they want you to look back and say, yeah, ne? How, can, how can I do it? How can God use me even in that, in that job, in that company? How can I do good? How can my marriage be good after I've been such a good person? Hey, all things have passed away. Behold, new has become. Don't even give a chance and listen to people who are like that. Don't even give your attention. They go to the length of digging the failures of your parents. Some they go to that length to dig of the failures of your parents and they bring it back to you so that you can come down, you know, as if somebody has poured you with cold water to say, hey, truly, you know, even my mother and my father, and when I go back, this has never happened. How can I do it? You can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. It's no longer you who lives in you, but Christ, the, the, the hope of glory. So arise and be and refuse that ladder that you are in now. You know, where you are now, refuse to go down. They dig your parents' failures so that you can stop building yourself. And improving yourself. They go back and say, ah, you know, have you, don't you know what happened with their parents? Don't you know how, how they, they, they got finished? Don't you know? And so that you cannot build yourself. So that you cannot go beyond. Hallelujah. So that you cannot break what God wants you to break and start something new. So don't descend to their level. Refuse to come down to such levels. Nehemiah. Go in prayer like Nehemiah did. He went to God for strength. He went to God for strength and he refused to dignify the mockery. They were mocking him. Instead, he went to prayer. Refuse. Refuse. Even though they say things that you know. Yes, I was like that. But behold, this is who I am. And I'm going to where God has called me to do. Amen. The, 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 the constructive criticism is a good one. And constructive criticism is the one that says, so don't allow such characters in your space. The, 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 the critic one, it's an unpaid, oh my God. The critic one, it's an unpaid laborer whose work is to expose your weakness. And they will never see any good in you. You can buy them everything you want. Take them to best holidays. Tell them every day how much you love them. They're not going to be pleased. That's who they are. All they see is just bad in you and to expose how weak you are. You will never impress them. They're there to bring discouragement on you to crush your confidence. Once your confidence is crushed, what can you do? Because they're there to show you, we see you on cloud nine, you hide there, but don't forget what happened. You know, don't forget where you come from. Where I come from is not where I am now. Where I am, I'm in a season of restoration. I'm in a season of deliverance. I'm in a season of healing. I'm breaking forth. There are things I've prayed about. There are things in my heart that God knows I've been longing for wanting to see in my life 
And they, they are not things of yesterday. So don't remind me about my mistakes of yesterday. This is who I am. So these, these people that are, are, are in your association, because remember, the Spirit of God says, I'm busy in your life. You need to watch out for these things. Don't allow anything to stop you. they there to crush your confidence. Your confidence become affected that you fear to do things because you already feel you will fail. They there to just plant that seed, you know. And when you think about it, you already know what's the use of trying. What's the use of studying again? What made you give up? You wanted to study something. I know you studied it and stopped it. Now why don't you study it all over again? I know you had plans for that dream, that business, and you had ideas what you're going to do to take them to another level. What stopped you now? <clears throat> what have stopped you? Start now. It's the same things. Association, the mind telling you you failed and failed and failed. And it's easy to distinguish between the destructive and constructive people around you. It's very easy. The constructive criticism, it says to you, you didn't do well, but you can do better. You didn't do well, but you can do better. That is constructive. It's not denying the fact that you didn't do well, but it's not crushing you. It says after, you can do better. But the destructive one, it says you, you are never good in anything. I just knew that as you're doing this one, you will fail, but you just did it anyway. The constructive one says, you failed this exam, but, it didn't, it, it, if, but if doing it again, you will pass it. You can focus more. I see potential in you. That is a very constructive one. You failed that exam, but if you can try it again and just concentrate, I see potential in you, you will do well. But destructive one, it says, ah, didn't you fail four years ago? Remember, even at school, you failed. But actually, even your father was a failure. That's a very destructive one. It takes you back and makes you see that, how can I go beyond that? But I'm here to say you can, and you are just that person that failed yesterday. Today, you are flying. You are breaking forth, and you are even doing better things that you never thought you would do. It says the constructive one, those positions... They never give them to ladies in our company. They never give them to ladies. But if you keep on knocking and not giving up one day, that door will open. That is constructive. We've never seen any lady climbing a ladder in this company to get such a promotion, to get such a, a, a position. But I just know that if you don't give up and keep on knocking on that door, you'll be the first one to break, you know, to break the doors and open, open for every ladies that has ever been there. So it's, it's very constructive. It makes you want to go and try again. But the destructive one says, who do you think you are? Even people that were better than you, they've, they've, they've resigned. Because this company has never given any woman such a position. So you might as well forget and apply for other things. That is a, a destructive one. If you've been disappointed in marriage, but you'll never be blessed one day and smile again. If you've ever been disappointed in marriage, let me tell you, you will smile again. It's not the end of the road. It's not that God doesn't love you. And it doesn't matter what others think, but God is with you. Get your breakthrough. Hallelujah. So the, 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 the constructive ones, they there to pull you down. You didn't make it on that interview. They, you, you tell them, I've been on the interview, and they say constructively, you didn't make it. Believe me, yours is coming soon. That's better than the one. And when it's your time, when it's your one, you will just know. What does that mean? You are, they are telling you, don't stop going for interviews. Don't stop applying. It doesn't mean because you didn't make it on it, you are stupid or you didn't do what you needed to do, but yours, when it comes, keep on knocking, you will get it. But the, the destructive one, 
It says, ah, we knew. You know, most COVID, even now, other companies are closing. So do you really think you will get it? How many people that don't have jobs? But you are not every people. You know what God is saying to you. You know, in such times of COVID, can you imagine? In such times of COVID, God is saying, I want you to live in this earth, on this earth that you're in. But I want you to live in another world where you will just experience things that people will say, wow, her God is alive. Amen. They were sarcastic. The other element, they were sarcastic. What is sarcasm? It means if you keep sarcasm, it means using remarks of clearly mean the opposite of what you say in order to hurt somebody's feelings. You know that people who are sarcastic, they just don't mean what they say. What they say, they say something and they mean something else just to hurt your feelings. If you keep people like that, you will never continue because they want you to descend to their level. Sarcastic, in a nice way, such people detach from them. We're not fighting. I'm not saying I hate you or something. I'm busy building myself. I need to make sure my dream and I cannot afford to come where you are to explain myself. Hallelujah. As you are busy realigning yourself back to your dreams, as you are busy building your career, building your business, your relationship, even with your family, your dreams, when you are doing what is right, there will be more noise to stop you. When you're doing what is right, there will be more noise to stop you. And remember, they never said anything to Nehemiah when he was not building the walls. Everything was quiet. He never experienced no Tobiah. He never experienced no Sanpalat, no Ammonites, no nothing, no Geshem. Everything was fine. But immediately when he started doing what he was born for, attacks came. Hallelujah. And they came in different forms. They will start showing up to have so much to say. They, they started coming to say so much. Why do you go for that? It didn't work for this person. So stop it. To discourage you. Even when you are about to do your business. It is okay. If somebody's business or 100 people's businesses, they didn't work out. Yours will do. Because you're not on your own. There's God that is doing things on your behalf. Hallelujah. So I'm here to say, watch out for that. Because God, just now you are about to sing, to dance, the dance of the spirit. You know, to say, hey, this is what God has done for me. My children, it was like an attack from attack to another attack. But the peace that I'm experiencing, my finances are in another level. There's just, now I'm able to even do what I, I want to do that I couldn't do. You know, I'm studying eventually. I'm continuing with my study. I've started with this new job, something I never even thought I would do. Hey, I'm, I have my own job, but look, I've got two businesses more. It can only be God. That's what we're speaking about. I was not sleeping, nightmares, left and right. When I sleep, I can't even sleep with my, my light on because of what happens at night. But deliverance has come. Wow, what a restoration. Now I can smile. Restoration has come. Breaking forth has come in my life. They discourage you that you are too old. Your English is not good. You won't make it. <laughs> Have you heard people saying that? Oh, the, 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 the English of that man. The English of that lady is not good. So you're not even going to be able to make it. Hey, I'm busy polishing my English. I'm busy studying. I'm busy with such things. Forget about my English, Tobiah. Forget San Palat about what is happening in my life. I refuse to come and tell you what I'm doing. I'm busy doing that. And you will hear the sound of breakthroughs of waters. Hallelujah. So the if... If you are with them in restaurants, <laughs> you ask them, you're sitting with them. Have you ever been with San Palace? You're sitting with them 
And you now you need to explain yourself. In restaurants, you know it when you're at home. Before you eat, you bless the food. Let's bless the food. When you're in restaurants with San Palat and Tobias, you just start saying, I'm not even blessing their food. I'm blessing what I'm going to eat, my food. Yo, they're calling you a pastor. Ah, she's a pastor now. He's a pastor. We can't even eat. with Those are people that are pulling you down. They're removing you from what you believe. Because blessing my food and praying for it, I don't do it at home only. But wherever I am, I need to give thanks to God. And so he can bless it. Because I understand that even the food that I eat, he provided for me. Hallelujah. So you watch for things like that. You never see them when you're not doing anything. They never very close. And it seems like you are so deeply close. It's because you haven't started. Reason why you think you're so close and everything is good. Because you haven't started building yourself. You haven't started doing something extraordinary that God has called you for. But once you start, you are claiming to be the best thing. You are claiming to be righteous. You, God hears you only. But you've never said anything. And you wonder what happened. No, it's time now to build yourself. And now because there are not people that are aligned with what God is doing and they are pulling you down. I cannot come down, refuse to go down in any way. In any case, it's time for restoration. So focus, keep your eyes on the cross, fix your eyes on him that is busy doing great things in your life. So such people... Run for your life. Otherwise, you will explain yourself all your life and do nothing. Amen. They discourage you with your age, with your car. When are you changing your car? But they're not even going to give you money to pay for that car. You won't be able to do this because of that. As long as you have Jesus on your side, age is nothing. So be encouraged and refuse to come down. Nehemiah. You know, to build the walls of Jerusalem, it could have taken decades, but it only took him 52 days. 52 days. Why? He was so focused. He was so focused. He didn't entertain time wasters. Focus on what God has given you. Focus on what you've been praying for all your life. Some They've got everything, but what they've been praying for, I just need the joy of the Lord in my life. Lord, bring back that joy, you know, just to be wrapped around in you, just to run into my closet and pray. Focus in that because there's nothing like that. There's nothing like being in the presence of God. Refuse to have things that are going to pull you, pull you from what God is doing in your life focus and refuse and refuse for time wasters who wants to put you down and explain yourself when you look at the time you see that it's already November January I knew that I must be restored I knew that God is doing something new in my life but I was busy explaining myself I was busy proving things to people that haven't done anything for me not that I have a problem with it, but I've wasted my time. So I'm saying to you, such things, watch out for them. And don't be mistaken. There are people that are good that God brings in our lives, that are there in our lives so that the will of God can be done. What we were born for can be done. Even those people, open their eye, your eyes so that you can see them. You don't chase them away. Because when God is busy in a season, there are people who need to nurture you. There are people who need to speak and see things and speak on your behalf. But in this case, these people were time wasters. And Nehemiah took 52 days to finish what could have taken years for him to finish because he didn't entertain time wasters, time wasters who acted as if they want to help him. Meanwhile, they wanted to bring him down. Because time wasters, they cannot waste your time far. So they come close to you so that they can waste your time nicely. So that they can pull you down nicely and tell you things that will make sense to you. 
but be, be of good courage, be wise, you know, rise up and stay there, stand there until you finish what God has said in your life. They wanted to bring him down. Their mind was set on what was right and to finish. Let your mind be set today. What is it that you want to see in your life? Set your mind on it and make sure that you finish it. You focus on it in the mighty name of Jesus. There is nobody that can make you focus but you. Amen. Verse 17. Can I go there and just read verse 17? Verse 17 says, But from then on, only half my men worked while the other half stood, guard with spears, shield, bows, and coats of mail. The leaders stationed themselves behind the people of Judah who were building the wall. The laborers carried on their work with one hand, supporting their load and the other hand, holding a weapon. No time to play. The Bible says, you know, the leaders, they stationed them and they made sure that while they be, they building, there's a weapon that they're having to make sure I'm building with this hand and on the other hand, I'm using my weapon because the enemy is not tiring. He can see. He can see that there's something great coming my way. He can see that I'm about to break yokes in my life. I'm about to, to break records for the glory of the Lord. Remember, you are a record breaker in the name of Jesus. You want to do things that has never been done. Yes, and God is preparing you. So while they were building the wall, the laborers carried on their work with one hand supporting their load and the hand and the other hand was holding the weapon. So no time to go down, no time to come down. It's time to be prayerful. It's time to fight spiritually. It's time to pray, to speak things. I know who I am. I am great. I am the head. I'm not the tail. I'm a great recorder. I'm glorious for the Lord. Greater is the one that is in me than the one that is in the world. I am beautiful. I'm handsome. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So they had their weapon while they were busy on the other side. So do not be confused. When the enemy is busy, you need to make sure that you, you, you're fighting. You're not waiting. The aim was to finish the project. There are things that are spoken in our families. This is a revelation. There are things that are spoken in our families from generation to generation in societies that needs you to break those bondages. You know, e.g., women in this family, they never make it or they never marry. Rather, they will make money even if you are okay with it because it's a norm. They do their lives. They, if you marry, your lives will be unbearable in their marriages or die. People have serious addictions. Those are things that were spoken. People with serious addictions, when they get to this age, they start changing. No matter how successful they are, no matter how educated they are, you will get up to this far. Those are the things that were spoken, that in this family, they will get up to this far. They will never go beyond that. Limitations, you know, those are the things that were spoken in some of our families. And you can see it. Giving up, it was, meant, it was not meant for me. Then you give up. The plans for me and you, they are to prosper. You know, God's plans for me and you is to prosper. But there's an enemy. There's an enemy who wants to to make us think that God himself doesn't want us to prosper. Why? So that he can accomplish the covenants and the things that he has spoken in our families. Poverty. Poverty is one of those things. And it's not from God. It's things that were spoken. Curses that you know nothing about. But when you get to that place or that age in your life, you realize that no man, something is happening. There might be, when you look back and you trace back, it's there. Unfinished dreams. People have great ideas. 
People have dreams. They start something. But when they must finish, they don't finish them. It's you who can break such things. God has given you for such as times like this. Authority, dominion, power. It has been given to you to break, to break the yokes, to break the chains. Hallelujah. To speak things and the mountain, they go low. You are given that. Nehemiah became a national hero. Why? The Bible says it was laid in his heart for him to build the walls. You are a hero in that family. You are a hero in that city. You are a hero in that town. You are a hero in that hospital that you're working on. You are a hero in that education gate. In that sport gate, you are a hero. In that media gate, you are a hero. In that company, you are a hero. Rise up. God is looking for great leaders everywhere, you know, so that his glory can be revealed. I don't know what is it that God has laid in your heart that you even didn't finish or left halfway. Unfinished dreams, unfinished businesses. Maybe you see yourself as a CEO. Finish it. Symmetry is filled with such people who are waiting for a certain time, saying, I'll do it when I get money. I'll do it next year. I'll do it. I'll be promoted when I have this and that. That dream can still happen now. Say, I cannot come down to a level of thinking I won't be able to make it. Remember Ephesians 6, verse 12. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, against the rulers and darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in high heavenly places. There are forces who are fighting you and come in form of Tobias, San Palat and Geshem. They are rulers in the highest places that go back to your family. They trace, they trace what was said. Your children, not a said about you and your children. They trace the lineage. Hallelujah. But you, God has given you authority to break it. He fought in order to finish the project, not to fight with people. No, we don't fight with people, but we fight. Hallelujah. The Bible says our warfare are not carnal, but pulling down, pulling down every stronghold. Hallelujah. We fight. We don't fight carnally. And he accomplished the goal of finishing the project, like fighting for your space. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you. All those who have kept you, whatever has held you in, in rulers, in, in, in highest places, come as forms of Tobias, of sun ballads that pull you down. I pray that God opens your eyes, that God makes you see exactly what is it you need to remove and focus on him. You are there to break what was said in your family, you are a record breaker. God has chosen you to break cases, to break limitation, sicknesses, attacks. You were born for such a times like this, for restoration, for deliverance, for healing, to take higher, higher dimensions in any place that he has given you. In Jesus' mighty name, refuse to come down. Say, I cannot come down. I'm busy focusing at what God has called me to do. And this time around, I'm breaking forth like rivers. Hallelujah. I'm breaking forth. I'm breaking forth. It's my time for restoration. God bless you. Uh, we're going to continue the last, um, the last one next week. In the name of Jesus, bless you. Good night. I love you. Come and see us in Dominion Life Changing Family Church in Kempton Park. You'll be blessed. And remember... Men, our bishop himself is saying, Adam, where are you? You've been hiding for so much. It's time for you to come. Allow your brothers, husbands, whatever, any men to come and be blessed and, and allow God to, to elevate them. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you.